So there were these data from animal models and in these animals who did not have an insulin action in their brain, they developed type 2 diabetes-like phenotype. And we wondered, is this true in humans? Can it be that insulin acts in the human brain and this is important for metabolism in the entire body? And this is how I became interested in studying how insulin acts in the human brain. And what we've learned so far is that indeed insulin acts in the human brain. This happens in many persons, but there's a substantial number of persons who are insulin resistant in their brain. In them, the brain no longer responds to insulin. We've learned that proper insulin action in the brain is important to coordinate your metabolism after food intake. It suppresses glucose production from the liver, it stimulates glucose uptake in the periphery, and over a long time, these processes contribute to the a regulation of body fat distribution. So this determines where in the body fat and energy is stored. If insulin action in the brain is good, your body stores energy uh, in the subcutaneous compartment. While in case of brain insulin resistance, these processes are disturbed, the brain can no longer control peripheral metabolism. And le this leads on the long run to an accumulation of fat in the visceral fat compartment in your belly. And this is where you don't want to have fat because fat in, in the visceral compartment is a risk factor for not only type 2 diabetes, but it's a risk factor for cardiovascular diseases and even some types of cancer. So insulin resistance of the brain leads to a phenotype that's very unfavorable. You don't want to have this. And what we've done over the last couple of years was to try to find out if brain insulin resistance is something that can be treated or if this is something that is fixed forever. So our first treatment approach was an SGLT2 inhibitor, empagliflozin. And we studied persons with prediabetes who were overweight, obese, and treated them, them with the SGLT2 inhibitor over a short time, over eight weeks. And these eight weeks of SGLT2 inhibition was sufficient to totally restore insulin responsiveness of the hypothalamus. So this was the first study to show that brain insulin resistance is something that you can treat in humans. And what is really interesting from, from our data is that this improvement in hypothalamic insulin action in response to SGLT2 inhibition was closely linked to improvements of peripheral metabolism to a reduction of liver fat content. And that's speculation, but I believe that improved hypothalamic insulin action could contribute to the clinical benefits that we know of this substance class that are present after long time and really hard clinical endpoints. The second treatment approach that we've tested was exercise. Here we included sedentary, overweight, obese persons and we had them exercise quite heavily over eight weeks. And this eight weeks exercise, they didn't lose weight, but it was sufficient to normalize their brain response of the putamen to a level that we normally see in lean persons. And again, this improved insulin action of the brain upon exercise was closely linked to metabolic benefits. Again, underlying that the brain can contribute to a metabolic regulation in the body and this is something that can be restored. So our next steps will be to better understand how this treatment works, to see what approaches work best and what the mechanisms are. And I hope that treatment approaches that will improve insulin sensitivity of the brain will not only be beneficial for metabolism, for diabetes and overweight obesity, but will also have beneficial effects on diseases of the brain that are much more frequent in our patients with type 2 diabetes, for example, depression and dementia. And I hope we'll learn much more about this in the upcoming years.